We're going to try uh, to paint over this, which I just did not like. I'm going to paint over it and try to do the Van Gogh color scheme. And um, we're going to go ahead and tilt because through time I have realized that these canvases, when you paint over um, a canvas, it loses its bounciness. Um, it loses its spring, uh, the stretchiness. So what happens is you paint on it and it, it's more likely to puddle uh, because there's no bounce to the canvas anymore. It loses its strength. So um, we're going to still paint on it, but I'm going to go ahead and allow it to tilt in the end. Um, and, and we'll just We'll just go with that because we know that that's what it's going to want to do. I'm going to have to do that anyway because it's it's going to puddle if I don't. So get it lined up with this camera up here, and we'll start coating it with the colors. So I'm trying an approach more similar to what Kathleen Osmore did in her recent milk paint video where I pour it on the corners and allow it to run over the sides first and then I shall worry about the middle. Um, also hoping that the tilting might uh, help with can't talk and do things at the same time. Hoping that the tilting might help with avoiding those puddles in the center, which that's definitely not going to happen this time because I'm going to tilt it. <clears throat> All right, we'll coat. The bottom. So this top portion that you're seeing from your angle is going to be gold with a horizon line and then you're going to have your ultramarine ultramarine down here at the bottom This technique might not work so well with the two-tone canvas once I get that tilting around. That's going to make a mess. I might still have to, at least it worked for the sides, but that's, I'm foreseeing, it's not going to work with me trying to maintain a maintain a horizon line. Unless I just tilt it to the left and the right, that would still maintain a horizon line, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm liking it better already. Covering up that mess. I, it, it's not the colors that I didn't like in that original one. It just, um, the composition was all wrong. Just kept seeing like a deformed elephant. And I felt bad for him. I wanted to put him out of his misery. ultramarine blue. No, I'm not very neat, am I? Alright. Uh... Kathleen mentioned to avoid the puddling common sense, just tilt it beforehand and then it wouldn't puddle as much. So I might do that. I might tilt it this way and that. Just move out the, the pour. I'm 
And then I can pick up some of that excess maybe. I'm gonna just catch it. seems to be less of a puddling now that I have done this. The question is, will the swipe be too thin because I've gotten rid of so much paint? Why not? You say, why did you do that? Why not? I don't want to keep doing the same things over and over again. All right, so prepare my cups. Oops, there's the ultramarine blue and gold. I'm going to give myself some space, not get paint on the bowls. What other colors was I going to use? I have over here, I have burnt sienna. This is sort of a purple, violet. It's not violet. It's like an indigo purple. And then I have my indigo. These are very similar. Indigo and then a more purpley indigo. And then this is pearl. So we shall prepare cups of those as this settles. Where are all my cups? There they are. Can't see any of this. <clears throat> and the question is, which way am I going to tilt it? Do I tilt it towards you? Or wouldn't it be cool to tilt it along the horizon? Maybe I'll do that in another painting. I don't know. My cups are stuck together. All right. Maybe I won't use more ultramarine because I've already got Maybe I won't use the purple. Is that too different? All right, gold, indigo. Brown. And pearl. Let's swipe. <clears throat> I'm going to do the full length one swipe. Off camera over here, I am, you can sort of see, I'm spraying. This is just water. And that's just paper towel. Wet paper towel will come towards me.
Now, I can see that that is lovely, but like I said, I know because this is a reused canvas, it already has two paintings underneath that this is going to sag really badly. So I'm going to tilt it. So I'm going to replace these short cups with taller cups. Where'd they go? Oh, they're right here. And then I'm just going to leave the camera running and let it do its thing. And maybe I'll catch the paint and we'll use it. Will that make somebody a little happier? Needs shorter cups. Better hurry. So we'll come back in a little while and see what happens. I mean, I know what's going to happen. It's going to all flow off and there's going to be some stretch cells. Not a big fan of this right here. That's some muddiness that I don't I don't feel like I usually fight a lot of muddiness, but that's definitely muddy. These are lovely. The contrast right there is really pretty. Unfortunately, I foresee that dumping off. But there's something to be said for fluidity and motion and consistency and gravity and allowing things to do what they're going to do. So even though I know I'm going to lose that, I'm going to let this do its thing. All right, so <clears throat> I think I like it. I um, wasn't sure at first. I knew I was going to lose the, those lighter ones, but then these things showed up as it stretched that I also like. So I don't know. Like sometimes you just got to allow things to develop. I can't wait to see what it looks like once it dries. All right, so we just did this painting. And I have all these cups here of the spillage. I'm gonna try to make a part of this painting, just, just in order not to um, waste paint. Uh, it might end up being sort of muddy, but this is already a absolute disaster in my opinion. And it has, quite a few paintings underneath. So I'm just not sure that this is going to ever be successful because the canvas is so compromised. 
So we're going to try to just experiment with it. I'm going to try the, the tilting swipe again, just allowing it to tilt in one direction from the beginning. Last time I tilted it vertically, so the swipe went with a certain horizon and then I just tilted up, uh, letting everything flow off the bottom of the canvas. So this time, I think I'm gonna tilt to one of the sides. Okay, so this is an awful angle with the top camera, but you got me. Um, I don't like this painting. It's very brown and uh, the brown just took over and so we're gonna cover that up. I'm gonna first coat we're still going to do the horizon with one color over here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't talk and do things at the same time. This is so aggravating. I'm dumping my leftover paint, sort of flip cup style, onto this canvas just because I don't want to waste paint. Okay, we'll try that again. <clears throat> My uh, overhead camera, the card, uh, quit because it was full, so I had to empty it. So we, we did a little flip cup with some leftover paint just to cover the canvas. And that's been sitting there for quite a bit because, again, I had to empty my memory card. Um, so, what else are we doing? We're going to, we're going to uh, fill this canvas with some color. I like that color, we'll do some more of that color. Oops, that wasn't the right color. I get so confused with this indigo and the uh, the the more purpley indigo. So that I meant to be the same as that, but it's not. That's this one. They're both just mixtures of the same two colors, which is ultramarine blue and magenta. It just so happened that the part. The more purpley one was sort of a mistake that I've held on to. It just had too much magenta for my liking. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a beautiful color. I just don't normally work with that in my, in my palette. Um, but I did end up using it in a painting called Lavish Royalty that um, Lou Coakley bought and it was beautiful and so I'm glad I didn't trash the color mixture because I need to use it more often. It's nice. Alright, so I'm just going to shift this paint around to coat the canvas a little bit more. Um, again, I'm going to swipe over this, so I'm not really paying much attention to the fact that there's this weird muddy river in the middle of it. I think that for the most part that will be camouflaged and or um, incorporated into whatever happens next. So I'm being ex highly experimental because these canvases, the one I did over here and also this one, again, have a lot of give to them. They're not bouncy because they have too many layers on them. And I know this 
So therefore, I'm just playing around, seeing what's going to happen, trying out some new approaches. One of those being to tilt and allow the sides to be coated this way, which I saw Kathleen Osmore do on her channel, Cause Creations. Thought I would give it a try because I do struggle with my sides being coated and I always forget to deal with them. So I'm dealing with them first as she did in the last video I saw that she did. So thank you to her. I've just sort of used a sponge brush in the past and that worked fine except for my paint mixture is quite thin and so picking up the drips and dealing with it that way just I don't know, it just didn't work that well. It ended up being quite thin. And this might end up being quite thin too, because my, my paint mixture is thin, but it's a new way to deal. You try it. Okay, um, we have a very crooked horizon already, but I'm um, gonna just allow that to be. Or maybe not, or maybe I'll do that. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing today, I'm a mess. I'm not centered or I'm just, I'm all up in my head. I can't talk, can't think. All right, so we're gonna swipe. We're gonna swipe this way along the horizon, but then we're gonna tilt towards the camera and see what happens, okay? Okay, okay, let's do this. So, uh, Let's do the um, lightest first this time. Why not? I'm not going to do any more gold. Um, but we'll do some brown. And bring back that ultramarine, come on, ultramarine blue, and the indigo. Let's try that. Got a piece of trash. It's all right. Okay, I really like that already. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, I told myself I was going to tilt because I have a feeling it's going to sag because these are old canvases, and that's what old canvases do. 
So before I fall in love with whatever it's doing, oh, I do want to pop the air bubbles first. <clears throat> All right, we're going to tilt. Are you ready? I'm just putting one slightly taller cup up here so that it's coming towards you. All right, here we are less than 24 hours later. This is the morning after. I think I was working early afternoon and here we are. This is about 8.15 the next morning and they're already visibly dry except you can see that one little puddle there. So this tilt technique definitely also allows for quicker drying despite the fact that this is not a new canvas. Obviously with layers on the canvas, previous paintings, it doesn't dry from underneath as well. But I'm very happy with the compositions. Um, this has a lot of fluid motion. This is probably upside down of the orientation this would end up being, I'm thinking at the moment, but I'm not sure. And it's got lots of beautiful variations in it, which you'll see better in the light. And this one, just, I love the contrast in that one. That's going to be super strong. Very excited. And good morning. I think I can show you in the light here that there is a major like do you see the whole shimmer and finish to this thing is ruined in this one spot it's super smooth all the way over everywhere else except right there So here's the lessons to take away from this whole fiasco. First thing is that if you reuse canvases, they lose their bounce, the paint weighs them down, they puddle more. But also, eventually, the paint's so thick that it doesn't breathe from underneath and then you get cracks and scars in your painting as it dries because it pulls away um, drying unevenly. What happened here was that the paint dried too quickly on the surface versus from underneath. If it was a fresh canvas, that wouldn't have happened because it would have gotten air circulation from behind as well. But because it has so many layers of paint underneath, the paint below was not breathing, so it wasn't drying, and what painted on top dried dried faster and so it just created a skin that was too weak and pulled apart as it was drying. I really am sad about that because I love this color combination and arrangement. I'm still on the fence about whether I would orient it this way, which I love because it feels like some sort of water world um, with water coming down and flowing this way. Or if I would arrange it this way because this just feels like some rising and falling beautiful abstract whatever it doesn't have to look like anything but I do I like the composition of that as well um, the only thing I don't like it about it besides the giant scar would be this 
it almost looks Christmassy right here with the green and the brown side by side. I didn't even put any green in it, but there was the, some green that was created from the blue and the gold mixing together. I don't normally have that happen, so I'm thinking it occurred because of the addition of the indigo purple color. Because usually just ultramarine and that do not create a green. Okay, so, and then there's this one. It survived. There's no blemishes other than this ripple here that already existed, but um, I just don't really like it. I've tried it in all different orientations. Every time I try something like this way with my tilt, in the direction of the tilt, it feels like a like an elephant face to me. Like this is its trunk coming down and this is its big forehead. And I love elephants, but I it distracts me and bothers me. And it it doesn't work like that in my opinion and it doesn't work like that. So therefore, that leaves me with this. And this just, even though it is a beautiful gold, for some reason, it's just not everything I wished it to be. So I'll give you some close-ups. So you can see the, that there is some nice shimmer to this in the light. Also, just to show you the lovely cells that are happening. And get these legs out of the way, sorry. All right, backing up, try that again. There is some beautiful stuff. And there's like a transparent veil of gold on top of the blue there, which is pretty cool. Gold, 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 gold. Too much gold, especially with a little bit of green on top. But I do love this. That's beautiful. Uh, and then over here, let's see. Uh, I love everything about this. I will try to repair this scar at some point. Um, I don't know how. I don't have a plan yet. That's my shadow, sorry. Don't really have a plan. But I do want to save it because I love, I love it. There's some more of that transparent veil of gold on top of the blue. It's pretty crazy. This blue area down here is really pretty too, the lighting. So I turned my classroom lights off and I'm trying to go with just outside light because this light above me flickers so bad you'd get a seizure. Anyways, there's some lovely purple up there in the corner with the gold. I love it. But I will say that I am never, ever, 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 ever going to paint on used canvases again, at least not the third round. Um, I'm frugal as can be, but it's a waste of paint. I have wasted so much paint because I keep trying to make it work. Um, and I have a closet full of uh, can new canvases at home because Michael's had a sale and I'm not using them because I'm still trying to make these work. But I need to just let them go rather than wasting paint on these canvases that are gonna sag and droop and crack. So that is the lesson, everybody frugality sometimes. And I would say that that frugalness goes for uh, a lot of people using the craft paint too. I am looking at your recipes and I'm seeing that you're using a lot more pigment paint than I am um, because maybe because the pigment load in the paint versus the binder is not as much. But I'm using like tablespoons of paint versus some people are using 50-50 paint and pouring medium. So there's food for thought. Is my recipe that much more expensive in the end? 
we're trying to be frugal, but we could also try to help each other, uh, not waste money in the wrong ways. That's just my two cents. I'm not judging anybody. I just feel like maybe in the end. And also, like, I don't have to coat my, my paintings. I don't have to coat my paintings in the end with any varnish of any sort because you saw in the light there how shimmery and smooth these things are without any sort of varnish or anything. That's just straight paint, that's the way it dries. So I'm also saving money on that end. I'm not having to add resin or a clear coat or a varnish or a polyurethane. <clears throat> so is my recipe the most expensive? I don't think so. But I'm still wasting a lot on these repaintings of old canvases. So I'm gonna stop doing that and maybe we'll get even more success in the future. Cause I feel like I've had a lot of failures lately. Um, and I've been super busy. And honestly, a lot of the footage I've been showing is pretty old, like back in the summer, you can still hear the, the birds chirping and see the leaves on the trees and the bugs doing their thing. Um, but Empty Bowls is over and I'm gonna be back on it very soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an epic painting sesh and got a co collaboration coming up with Kathleen Osmore. I'm super excited about that. So like and subscribe to my channel. Check out all the merch on Teespring and the banner down below. Um, thank you to my patrons, you guys rock. Thank you so much and see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.